But it's bringing Executive Secretary of the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, Lawson Naidu, joins me from Cape Town for more on this. And Lawson, thank you for your time. Your reaction, of course, to uh, Busisi Mkhwebane being officially removed as public protector. Uh, good morning and thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, the president had no discretion once he was informed by the National Assembly uh, of the vote that was taken uh, in, in, uh, in Parliament on Monday. Uh, he had no discretion but to remove her from office. The Constitution is quite clear in saying that he must uh, then um, uh, remove uh, uh, the impugned public protector from office, which he has now done. Uh, so that is the end of the, the road, as it were, for, for Busisi Wem Kobani, at least for the moment. We know that uh, a, a review process of uh, the decision of the La National Assembly is likely to follow. With that being said, Lawson, I know that also political parties, at least some of them, had uh, tried to vote in secret ballots. This did not uh, succeed. Uh, more public ballots actually went through. I mean, how do you find the voting process and, uh, in your opinion, the outcome that resulted from it? Well, I think, you know, Parliament has been given uh, some guidance uh, by the Constitutional Court in the secret ballot case uh, some years ago, uh, where uh, the court said essentially the decision as to whether a vote is open or in secret is a matter uh, for Parliament to determine, for the Speaker to de determine in particular cases. Uh, I, I tend to agree with the Speaker in the, on this occasion that there were no circumstances uh, that existed here that warranted a, a secret ballot in this matter. The Section 194 inquiry uh, was open for all of us to, to observe as it uh, went about its work. Uh, members of Parliament would have been aware of that. They would have uh, been expected to have read the report of the Section 194 committee uh, and to vote uh, uh, accordingly on the basis of the evidence and the recommendation from that committee. So I see no, no reason why the vote should have been conducted in secret. It's highly unlikely, given the numbers that we've seen that were, were cast on Monday, uh, that it would have made any difference in any case. Mm. It seems the EFF, though, is saying that they will be taking uh, the matter on review. Further calling on Busisi Mukhebane to, uh, you know, jump in and join the legal challenge. What do you make of the EFF stance? Well, as I say, it's, you know, it was to be expected that there would be a legal challenge, uh, you know, whether it emanates from political parties that are dissatisfied with the outcome. Uh, or from uh, Busisiwe and Kwebane herself, uh, uh, it was to be expected. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, the, the, any uh, uh, legal challenge would have slim chances of success. I think uh, the committee, as I say, conducted its, uh, its work transparently. Uh, I think they bent over backwards on occasion to accommodate the requests from uh, from Kwebane and her legal team. Uh, she was certainly, despite what is being said, uh, she, she was certainly... Uh, given uh, access to legal representation throughout the process. Uh, so, you know, the, any procedural issues that uh, are likely to be raised in review, and they're likely to be procedural issues rather than substantive ones, because we've seen very little uh, argument that on the substance of the allegations, uh, the committee got it wrong. So uh, there, there seems to be very little uh, uh, contestation on that point. Hmm. I mean, let's take it back to, I suppose, some of the actions we've seen from Busisi Mkhwebani leading up to her removal from office, even this official letter by the president. Um, we've seen her write a letter to President Cyril Ramaphosa that she would be returning back to work, saying that the work of the Section 194 inquiry was completed, and therefore she's well within her rights, according to her, to report back to her office. We know that uh, that wasn't successful because the president said perhaps she's been misinformed, or misled uh, in coming to that decision, but she still, or at least at the time, was still duly suspended. Did the, you know, did Busisiwe at all stand a chance, that, uh, Lawson, in terms of going back to work and conducting, you know, her work for the day as as, as business as usual? Uh, well, it was certainly a bizarre interpretation uh, by Busisiwe and Kobani of the circumstances that the suspension <laughs> could clearly not come to an end merely because the committee had completed its work. The National Assembly had not completed its work. So the process of that uh, investigation and inquiry by Parliament had not been concluded. So there was clearly no basis uh, on which you could argue that she had a right to return to work between the time of the committee uh, submitting its report to the National Assembly and the National Assembly taking a decision on that. And I think it, it was an opportunistic attempt to try and gain public sympathy. 
Uh, but if anything, it demonstrated if any proof was needed of her warped sense of uh, or, or understanding of the law. Well, she has also came out scathing, uh, you know, writing this, actually, as a matter of fact, tweeting this. I just want to quote her here, uh, Lawson, saying that this injustice sadly perpetrated on Steve Biko Day will be legally challenged in review proceedings. Not only does she call the results, the outcome, an act of injustice, but she further on, you know, correlates it and says it's, it's, it's intentionally perp perp perpetrated on Steve Biko Day, you know, almost uh, aligning this, uh, you know, what, what has happened to similarly to Steve Biko, because on Steve Biko Day, one can help but think of the injustices against Steve Biko himself and says, Again, thirdly, they will be legally uh, challenged and they will be challenged in review proceedings. What do you make of this? It almost seems like a, uh, it's not goodbye. It's until we meet again because I will not let this outcome you know, slide just like that gently. Well, you know, I think it's clear that uh, Ms. Mkwabane is seeking to, to play, the, uh, play the victim once again, uh, that she's been treated unjustly and unfairly. Uh, and, uh, you know, any litigation that may emanate from here will, will determine the outcome of that. Uh, but, you know, certainly to try and equate herself with Steve Biko, I think uh, most South Africans would see, see through that, you know, uh, an icon of the struggle for liberation in South Africa, whose memory lives on decades after his death. Uh, I don't think uh, Mkwabani's uh, legacy would last that long. Lawson, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for speaking to me this morning about this. Of course, uh, uh, Lawson Naidi joining me at the back of Busisio Mkhwebane being officially removed from office. This letter uh, coming through from the president's uh, office. And I just want to uh, quote here the president saying that uh, the constitution states that following the conclusion of the section 194 uh, in process and inquiry, he must remove the public protector from office. Thus, of course, uh, making that decision a month before her term actually comes to an end.